Hello and welcome to Die Hard United, the one stop for everything Manchester United. I'm here to give you all the latest news concerning United. It's coming out today, Sunday, the beginning of a new week. And we have a massive update concerning Joshua Zexi as the deal to sign him is almost done. We have personal terms agreed with the player and their commissions agreed with the agent. Let's see how that progresses. More details on that, on that um, in this video. We'll talk about delete also. Almost the same situation with Joshua Zexi. That deal is almost done. Just some few details that we need to clarify. We want to talk about that. Donny van der Beek to Girona. Details on that for 500,000 euro when Donny van der Beek goes to Girona. More details, more details on that. Precision training starts tomorrow, Monday. Uh, we'll talk about Mason Greenwood and his future. Also, Dylan Sancho as both players. Will they return to precision training tomorrow? Also, Aramagua and his future. Um, we're going to sign two centre-backs, most likely. Where does that leave Aramagua at Manchester United? Stay tuned for everything. As we're going to be talking about everything I mentioned now. And also, since the beginning of a new week, we're going to talk about what we expect to happen next week in terms of Manchester United and in the transfer scene for us generally. Both for players coming in and players going out. Don't forget to like this video. Click on that subscribe button. Click on that follow button. Leave your comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about everything discussed in this video. Let's get straight into everything. Starting with the very first news of today, we start with Joshua Zexi. As earlier today, we got an update from Fabrizio Romano and David Onstein concerning the latest with Joshua Zexi. It says United are working to finalize the signing of Bologna striker Joshua Zexi. Zexi's release clause is £34 million and has, and has to be paid in full, which is seen as a potential clash, cash flow issue for United. They are exploring whether to activate or negotiate a price separately. Personal terms are agreed. Um, agents and commissions agreed they are sizable but viewed as a fair in context of the deal. United see it as a good value for money. Joshua Zexi basically to United is 95% done. We are going to have to negotiate with Bologna because we want to, instead of paying that 34 million pounds in full this summer, we are trying to see if we can negotiate something that will enable us pay it instrumentally. So that it means that we have less money to pay um, this summer. Because, for example, we can agree to pay them 20 or 50 million uh, mil pounds this summer, pay um, 10 next summer. It just reduces the amount of money we have to spend this summer because we have to look at other transfers in the markets. So we're going to have, have to negotiate with that. And that will probably mean that if we negotiate with them, instead of paying the release clause, we might have to pay more than 34 million pounds. But the first, the main thing is, 34 million pounds already is very, very cheap for Joshua Zexi. So if we get, if we end up paying 40 million pounds uh, because we're paying 6 million uh, pounds extra because we're not going to pay everything at once, it's still worth it because 34 million pounds is a very, very cheap deal for Joshua Zexi. So that is the plan to negotiate with them because we don't have to pay everything in full. And for, from Fabrizio Romano, um, concerning deletes also, he says, um, minded have, have minded have green light from both Joshua Zexi and Matthias Elite to join the club. Both players have spoken to Ten Hag and with United now ready to advance on club side in the coming days. It's all approved on salary and commission for Zexi. This was from Fabrizio Romano. The other one was from David Ornstein. But basically, we are in the same position with Joshua Zexi and Delete because we are negotiating with both clubs. We have agreed with the player on the player side totally on the player side. Both players want to come. Both players are speaking to Tegad. Both players want to come. So now we are speaking to... We want to start speaking to the clubs to negotiate with them. For Bayern, Man United won't, doesn't want to pay for um, anything more than £42 million. And even that £42 million, we have to negotiate uh, it a bit lower. But Bayern are not willing to do that. And instead, Man United might, Man United might look at paying something a little bit lower now and adding ads on to the deal. So that's what's going to happen. Or that's what's happening right now between... Joshua Zexi and Delete. Both deals are basically done, but we are discussing with the with the clubs. We have probably agreed a total fee, a total package with, the, with, the, with these clubs, but what is holding the deal down is how we are going to pay that package that we have agreed with them already. So it's, invest, it's, a, it's, a lot, it's not a big deal, but um, it's just something that we, it might take some days to finalize. But also, even if we agree a deal for these players, they are not coming anytime soon because of their boat on international break. And after international break that ends next week, this week rather, after international break that ends this week, or no, the final is next week, the final is next Sunday. So after that, these players are still going to go on holiday. 
So they're not, going to, they're not going to be back until after their holiday. So even if we get to sign them this week, they're not going to be back till later the first week of August because they have to go on at least two to three weeks break. And if they do that, the August, and July is over. They're not going to go on pre-season tour. They're going to come in in August, sign the contract in August, do the reveal in August. Would they even be ready for the first game of the season? I'm not really sure. So these deals are going to take time because these players have been on international break. But let's see what happens with those two transfers because they are most advanced than any other transfers we are on so far. Let's talk about Lenny Yoru because according to David Onstein in his article he released today when he was talking about Jura Sexy, in between there he also put in um, that United are actively pursuing Lille defender Lenny Yoru. Through, though Real Madrid are regarded as the favorite to sign the 18-year-old. He just said we are still interested, we are trying to push even if we know that Real Madrid wants him and he wants to go to Real Madrid, Man United are in that deal because we want him. And if there's any small chance that we can get him, we are trying to do that. The same thing with jo we are Neves. Your Neves has a ridiculous, uh, ridiculous release clause, but Man United are still in that deal because we probably want him too. He's probably our one of our, our he's probably our top target there, and, and Leliogo also is probably one of our top targets at centre back. So we're actively pursuing that deal. But someone keeps asking me, where do you get this news from? Blah, 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 blah. If I create a post, I tell you where I get the news from. You can go and search it by yourself. Or if not, you can keep quiet and listen and read the post that was um, that was given to you because it says we are pursuing him even though we might do that regarded as favorite. Nobody said we're going to send Lenny Euro. We are in that deal. We might lose out, but we are in it. So it doesn't even matter. We might lose out, but we are in it. And if there's a small chance that Real Madrid doesn't want to pursue that deal, then we can pounce in and get the deal done by convincing by convincing convincing the player to come to us. That's how it works. You don't just sit down and and relax. We want him, so we're going to pursue pursue him. And if there's any chance we can convince him, we are going willing to do that to get him. So look, watch out for Lenny Euro. If as long as he doesn't go to Real Madrid, there's still a tiny chance that he might come to Manchester United. Let's see what happens. Let's see what they do. Can't talk. Can't do too much about that. Now let's talk about the preseason training that starts tomorrow and players that we were expecting to be there. Because, you know, there's a question that has going on in everybody's mind. Missing Greywood, Didin Sancho, what's going to happen, and blah, blah, blah. First things first, according to um, some articles we're getting from the Miro UK, Missing Greenwood wants his future to be sorted out in the next, this next week as he's growing impatient with the uncertainty over where he will play next season. And from that article also from the Miro UK, it says that um, United are going to extend Missing Greenwood's break because he's not going to be back tomorrow in preseason training. A, a picture come, came, uh, came out today. This is the picture. I'll put the picture here. You see him training privately with um, Shola Shulatiri, one of our ex youth player. He was training with Shola, um, Shola Shulatiri at Man in Manchester, somewhere in Manchester, privately. So he's going to he's going to continue his own private tra um, preseason training, but he's not going to be back at Carrington. Greenwood is not going to be back tomorrow, and if he's back tomorrow. Me, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be shocked. But he's not going to be back from the reports we're getting. He's not going to be back. But for Jadon Sancho, according to the report, even if Jadon Sancho and Ten Hag have issues, Sancho is going to be back in preseason training tomorrow. Because of course he's part of the team. He's not banned. He's not. There's nothing. There's no official ban. He's not suspended. He's nothing. He's, he's he just having issue with the manager. So he can be part of preseason training as we look at settling his future. So Sancho is going to be back. He's going to be back tomorrow in preseason training. We might see pictures of him training with, 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 the, with the players that are available. But Mason Greenwood is not going to be part of that setup. Because if he's back, it's going to cause a whole lot of problem. And since we have agreed to sell him, that deal is going to move on. We're going to try to look for clubs that are going to buy him. And that's what I'm focusing on. So Greenwood is not going to be back in tomorrow's training, in preseason training. So that's that for that. Now moving on to Harry Maguire. Reports coming out from the Daily, um, from the Daily Mirror, um, also the Mirror UK. It says that Harry Maguire's future is shaking because United are trying to sign two new centre backs. And if we sign two new centre backs, what does the future of Harry Maguire hold? Because there's no future. Basically, Lindelof is about to go somewhere. We don't know where yet, but Lindelof is definitely leaving. Maguire has to leave too. Um, according to the report, he has had, had talks with Dana Schwartz and then Eric Ten Hag. They have both had talks with him, and it is looking highly likely that they are going to try to ship him out. He's not he's, his wage, his wages is significant for him to be a bench player. He's not he doesn't fit our playing style. Ten Hag has already promised the leads that is going to be part of his, he's going to be a vital player in his defense. Him and 
Martinez are going to be the two main defenders at our back. That's our two center backs. So where does uh, Maguire go when he's earning 190 pounds per week? Why, why would we keep him on the bench? So uh, Maguire is going to leave. He has had talks with Ten Hag. He has, he has had talks with Ten Hag Schwartz. The, the agreement is he's going to go. Whether or not we find a club that's going to buy him, that's an issue. Whether or not we find a club that will be willing to pay him enough for him to leave, that's an issue. But Maguire's future is almost like 10% that he, that he stays. Also, for this kind of players, maybe Ari Maguire, Casemiro, players you want to um, you want to sell, basically. You don't have to really force them, right? You start signing the players that will praise them already. And when they look at that, oh, and for example, Ari Maguire, we're going to we're already signed the lead. Wow. Where am I going to play? We sign another defender. Where am I going to play? He knows that his future is, is bleak. He, said, he tells his agents, get me a new club. Let's move out. That's what basically we have to do. So let's see what happens with Maguire. But the future of Maguire is he's going to be sold and he's going to go. It's going to be a very big week at the club next week. We are going to be having lots more progress on incomings and outcomings. And when the preseason starting tomorrow, it's also going to drive lots of news concerning the future of lots of players. So let's see what happens um, from um, tomorrow. Um, watch out for Joshua Zexi. Here we go. Delete. Here we go. If they are out of the Euros on Tuesday or Wednesday, watch out for what happens with those players. And also for outgoings, we're going to get some updates concerning Raj, um, concerning even maybe even Rashford, Harry Maguire, uh, Lindelof, because these players are going to be back in training, in precision training. And do we sell them before we go on precision proper on the top of USA? Do we sell them before them? Does Amaguire leave before them? There might be no rush to sell those players because the transfer window ends in August. But let's see what happens in terms of players leaving and players coming. Remember, the structure is done, structure is complete. So now it is all action, action, action for the Unions group. And let's see what we can get done next week. Watch out for next week. Like I said, watch out for next week.